In this video, I'm going to show how to use the Buried Volume tool in the Secro plugin for Chimera X. Now, the structures I'm going to be using uh, for these examples are from um, this paper here. So, uh, I'm not associated with any of these authors, but their SI has a whole bunch of different catalyst structures that you can um, go and grab and uh, test around with um, if you don't have one of your own handy. So, uh, back to Chimera X. Okay, so to open the tool, you go to Tools, Structure Analysis, and then Buried Volume. Um, I'm going to try and dock it on top of the log here just to save a little bit of space. And then I'm going to open up one of those uh, one of those structures. So the, I'll just do this one. Okay. So uh, there's some basic instructions on the tool window here. So step one, select the ligand. Uh, when there's just one ligand, I think the easiest way to do this is to, um, over on the more right mouse tab, you can activate the select fragment mouse mode. And what this lets you do is you just click on the ligand and it selects the entire thing. Um, now these chlorides, these are placeholders. We're not going to be including them in the buried volume calculation. Um, so yeah, just this uh, psychfoss ligand here. So set ligand to current selection, and then we are going to change the selection to the reaction center, which is this palladium atom, and then we can uh, calculate the buried volume. So we can see that um, for this, it is 56.5%. Uh, there's also this use centroid of centers option here. Um, what this does is um, if you have like multiple atoms selected when you uh, click this calculate button, um, it'll use like the average position of those as the reaction, as like the center for the buried volume calculation, which might be a decent approximation for something like a porphyrin ligand. Um, but in this case, we just have the one atom. So that's, we don't need to do that. Um, so that's with the one ligand. We can also do this with uh, several ligands simultaneously. So I'm going to go back and open up um, a whole bunch of structures from this. Not too many because it does take some time. Uh, okay, that's a kind of a mess. I'm going to split them up. Okay, right, it's a little bit better. So here I've got, oh, how many is this? 28. Um, so here it would definitely be, uh, it's definitely going to be a lot easier to use commands to select all these rather than going and clicking on each individual one. Um, so let's see command that I'm going to use is going to select these based on the number of bonds. So select. And there's uh, several ways that you could do this, but I'm going to select anything that has at least one bond. So number of bonds greater than zero. Now, some of these are also ferrocene ligands, um, which, you know, that one's probably far enough away that it's not going to matter. But just in case, we're going to go and add in the irons in those ferrocene ligands. So select add Fe. Okay. Um, just going to clear the data table here before we uh, calculate these. So with that, I'm um, going to set ligands to current selection and then select the reaction center, which in this case, these are all palladium atoms. So select PD. Okay, and uh, calculate buried volume. Okay, so uh, there's there's all those, and we can export this to a CSV file or copy it directly to our clipboard to paste into our spreadsheet if that's what we're doing with it. So that is uh, the basics for the buried volume tool. There's also some visualization options, which I'm going to go back to just one structure for that um, to make it a little bit easier to see. Right. And I'll clear out the data table one more time. So uh, commonly people will do a steric map for this. This is basically an altitude map. Um, it kind of shows you where the ligand is most bulky, where it's going to be kind of protruding into where the um, substrate is, because that can influence the um, like 
that can have some asymmetric influence on a reaction. So um, to do a steric map, all you need to do is go over to the steric map tab and uh, check this box. Uh, there are some visualization options like this is basically the resolution, it's how many contour levels, um, your color palette, uh, you know, labeling the quadrants with the varied volume component that's in each one, uh, and then some other kind of basic options there. So let's see for this ligand, so I'm gonna set ligand and calculate. When it calculates, it'll pop up with the steric map, like so. And then to save it, uh, you click on the floppy disk down here, and then you know the save window will open up, and you can save it somewhere. Um, we can also make a 3D visualization, which I'm calling a volume cutout. You can do this for either the free or the buried volume. Um, I'll just do it for the buried volume here. Um, and these are some more like resolution type options, and then you can also label either the quadrants or the octants with the buried volume, um, which I'll do quadrants. So just calculate again to, um, to show that. So yeah, and then there are also some settings associated with the actual buried volume calculation itself over on the settings tab. Um, so there's different like measurements for um, the van der Waals radii. Uh, so there's this UMN one, which is from the University of Minnesota. Um, so it's Center for Theory and Computation, I think. Um, so a group from there published a set of radii. And then Bondi, it's a bit of an older set of van der Waals radii, but it is uh, perhaps a little bit more, or still commonly used. The references for those can be found on the um, documentation page here. So if you click the tool and go help. Um, so here's like the references for those. If you click these, it'll take you there. And then the those radii are typically scaled up by a little bit, 17% is pretty common. Um, and the radius around the reaction center, in this case the palladium atom, um, three and a half angstroms is really common, but there might be a reason to change that. Like maybe you want to do like um, volume two VEC calculations or something. And then the uh, integration method. So we have Lebedev and Monte Carlo. I prefer Lebedev. It's pretty fast for the accuracy that you get. Um, and then these are some, some settings for the uh, Lebedev integral. So, um, you know, higher number of points is gonna be more accurate for both of these options here, but it will make it take a bit longer. And then report volume, uh, this uh, determines how the buried volume is reported in this table here. So you can do the total, or you can have it be split into quadrants and octants. And then those quadrants and octants are determined um, either using the display orientation if this box is checked. Um, so if the box is checked, then the z-axis will basically be coming out of the screen. And then the x and y will be like to the right and up, respectively. Uh, whereas if it's unchecked, let me get rid of that visualization there. Um, the z-axis is like the average direction from the coordinating atoms, which in this case are the phosphori, um, to the reaction center. And then uh, the y-axis is basically uh, orthogonal to the plane of best fit for those three atoms. And the, the x-axis is um, determined in such a way that it forms a right-handed coordinate system. So. Uh, yeah, so those are the different options available on the Barry Vaughn tool. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below.